Today, we have a very highly requested video, which is gonna be full acrylic removal into a gel polish set right now on Real Time. Okay. Oh yeah, I like that face. Let's get it going. Ah! Today's real time is a little different, but this is very common in the salon mm -hmm. where you've got somebody that's been wearing like stilettos for a while and maybe they just want short nails. So they want a full removal into like a gel polish set. Talk me through this, Trace. This is really common, especially in the summer. Yeah. So people start going on vacation. They're not wanting to really deal with the long nails. They want something that, you know, if they do go on vacation and something happens, they're not worrying about a broken nail yeah. or anything like that. So it's like a low maintenance summer look. This actually sounds like it's, it's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of like execution, how long are we talking? Uh, 30. 30 minutes, yeah. full removal, new gel polish, out the door. Yep. Sweet, are you ready? Let's do it. Let's do it, Trace. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna snap these off, which is like my favorite part of the whole thing. There's something satisfying about this. Get rid of it. You don't wanna use, we're just using toenail clippers. You don't wanna use anything like, um, I call them the dog toenail clippers, uh, the tip cutters basically, or a, um, what am I looking for, Steph? The nippers. Nippers, yes, because they tend to split up, which can hurt. We have body parts all around. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna snap. This kind of usually just goes straight across. I found a straight edge, which is awesome. I found where Greg hit him. Mm -hmm. They work the best. If you have curved ones, it works too, but it's you kind of have to angle them different. But this really, literally, is the fastest way I promise if I can get it on there. Sometimes when you have the longer nails, you can run into issues because they're thicker in that center. So we're trying to get it across. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know what, we'll come back to it. Okay, so this one didn't want to snap. We're just gonna take our safety bit and I'm just gonna thin it down. Horrible, horrible noise. Okay. So we're just getting rid of this. So how often did you have this happen? So people came in and just wanted to get rid of them um, for the summer. A lot of the time during the summer, I feel like clients start going, being a little bit more active. Sometimes they're not making it in for their every two week appointment. So they were just ready for something a little bit different. Yeah. Did you tend to thin them down or did you take them all the way off? I would do what you just did, clip the tips off and then I would thin down to pretty much almost nothing. That's what I plan on doing, like giving you as little strength to be dealing with. Yeah. Keep a little length on it and then, yeah, I like that. Yeah, and then just go into like, you know, some clear gel polish or whatever that was kind of low maintenance for them. Right. The small amount of acrylic left, I felt like would usually kind of hold up the some of the strength while they were growing yeah, out. Because I t people tend, that, and we hear this all the time, right, with clients, they're like, okay, I have my nails underneath long now, so yeah. just go ahead and take them off. Like they're gonna stay long like that because they think they'll stay strong and you're still dealing with the same nails that God gave you. Mm -hmm. You're probably not gonna keep that length. So if we give them a little bit of strength by leaving a little bit of product on there, they can adjust to not having those nails anymore. Exactly. So I like that. So we're just using that core safety bit, coming through and thinning it out. I like that. Um, so what we did today is we actually got on the community our Facebook community and asked what everybody wanted to see. And this was a couple people wanted to see this um, because it's pretty real to life. Mm -hmm. What happens and so on. Vacation time of year. It, I think it's m mostly about the kids in yeah. this vacation. Like finding that time. Taking them out of town mm -hmm. and sometimes your schedule is less consistent. So true. I'm just trying to get most of it down. We had some glitter on, so we're just taking that 
Down, down, down. I found with electric filing, as long as you're in constant motion, you don't really run into the friction, heat burn kind of sensation. That's really true. So basically we're always kind of keep putting it down, picking it up, putting it down, picking it up, moving it in different areas. If I hold this in one spot, I'm gonna light you on fire. Right. Right. But it's the exact same thing with a hand file. Like if you put it in one spot and go for it, like you're trying to create a fire, rubbing the two sticks together, it's gonna heat. Mm -hmm. So you're always wanting to heat, and, and like pressure has to do with it too. Like if you're putting a tremendous amount of pressure down and then holding it in one spot, like woof, it's gonna light on fire. But again, it's really no different than like a hand file. Yeah, I, would, I used to tell people like a general rule of thumb was not to stay in any place for more than like two seconds. That's a good rule. Um, even if there was still more product I knew I needed to remove, you know, stay up in a corner or something, I would just keep moving around the nail and then come back to it rather than just like, you know. Yeah, like insisting, no, I must finish the one spot. Yeah, it's like I came there, I came to here, now I'm going to go back there. Like you just constant movement. You're still whittling stuff down. Dust. <laughs> Lots of dust. Um, you're still whittling stuff down, but you're, you're always in motion. You're always working. Okay. So this is, I think we have acrylic on you, right? Yes. So it takes a little bit more time to take down. Now, personally, what I was taught to do, and a lot of people still do it, and that's perfectly fine, is they soak off. Okay. I just find that takes so much time up to have to soak. Mm -hmm. It's just faster to do it in this form for me. Um, again, I'm just whittling down to the base of her acrylic. Whittling, that sounds so uh, aggressive. <laughs> Taking it down to the base of her acrylic, we're gonna leave a thin layer on, but even if we weren't, I'd still just use my electric file. Right. Now some people, until you get comfortable, sorry Steph, until you get comfortable with that, you could get it really, really thin with your electric file and then go ahead and soak the remainder off until you're really comfortable with it. Do we have any questions? What's been going on? Um, what bit are you using and is that your preference for removing? I'm using the core safety bit today, which is Pretty equal. I'll, I'll either grab this or I'll grab like um, my X cut. Just whatever, which one. Um, same coarseness. So it just depends if you're not really comfortable with using an X cut around that cuticle area. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and grab your safety bit. This is the one I just saw out. It's my newer bit. So I decided to use this one. Mm -hmm. And that's just gonna take down, like if I tried to do this with a mandrel or the medium cross cut, oh. We're gonna be here a while. <laughs> so you really gotta use the tool that's gonna work the best for you and shave it down the fastest. And that's gonna be your coarse bits. But again, we're not on your natural nail. We'd never put this on your natural nail. Did you ever have, um, how would you handle it if your client didn't tell you this ahead of time? Like if I came in for a fill and then I was like, just kidding, I wanna take them off. <laughs> just kidding. I would hope that my client would communicate it prior, especially if I had scheduled them something like an hour-long appointment. But let's say it is a 30-minute appointment, and they come in and say, oh, I want to take them down, and I'm, it's not going to cost me any time. It's fine. Oh, I have a good question for this. Uh, what would you charge for removal, and do you charge for removal if it's your own work? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah, because it takes time, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to charge... Probably at least, I knew you were going to ask that. I'm mm -hmm. trying to think about, I think I charged 25 for removal. I think that's what I charged back in the day. But I think that's still fair since it's not going to take me too much time. And then I would charge you for the gel polish service that you're getting. Okay. Um, just because, and I know some people are like, well, you don't do that when you take off the gel polish. This is a lot more work yeah. than removing gel polish. Right? It's going to take me, you know... It, Though it takes me about the same amount of time, it's putting a lot more wear on my electric file. It may take you a little bit longer to do than just a traditional. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is, it is extra. 
So do you consider that to be a part of your price when you're just like seeing someone for another service or you know like if I came in for a fill do you consider there to be like a removal for what you're taking off or mm -hmm. is it all just kind of in the same price? Okay I need you to explain a little bit more. I had somebody that was DMing me last week mm -hmm. and she said she was trying to set her prices mm -hmm. and she was wondering about removals because she's like, should I just have that included in my price or should I charge them less if they've, came, if they've removed the nails themselves? Oh, well, if the nails are gone, right? Like, so if you came in and your nails were gone, I'm going to just be charging you for a gel polish service. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So, but if you come in with a full set of acrylic, especially if it's not my work. Yeah. And you want uh, it removed and then redone, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to charge you for that. But it's just going to have to be that way. Okay. Let's go ahead and get rid of this dusted stuff. So we got that off. Let's go ahead and push back a little bit. Clean it off the dust a little bit and make sure we're in the right thing. Hopefully I'm keeping my big head out of the way. Let's see what we got. So again, we're just pushing back. Definitely have a little growth. Get that done and then we're going to put, prep the nail, clean up that cuticle area and get that ready. So let's go ahead and switch to our medium. So was that the, right, is that what you were looking for? Yeah, that was kind of what I told her because I, I said that personally for me when it's my, if it's my own work, um, I didn't usually have a removal fee unless that was all they were having done. Uh, and even then it was usually lower because I didn't want my clients to think that they could remove themselves their nails themselves mm -hmm. in order to like save an extra buck, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, I always charged if it was removal from someone else's work because, um, sorry, I'm not liking that bit. Oh, it must be dull. Getting that leather. Um, but I, yeah, I didn't want them to try to take their nails off themselves to like avoid the cost of removal mm, and the sense. set. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I guess what? you could have a, like a summer special, right? Like you could be like, for those people that are wanting to, you know, short summer nails, you know, and set a certain special price for removal and for reapplication. That yeah. would be cool. Yeah. Like maybe like an extra, you know, small amount. Yeah. Um, what would you do in the circumstance that someone had scheduled a full set with you and mm -hmm. then walked in and had nails on and you hadn't planned for that? Obviously, that wouldn't fit into your schedule. What right. would you do? Oh, because, yeah, because you have to remove. Yeah. You, you, know, you have to communicate. Like, you don't stress yourself out. If you literally have the time, that's great. You can say, listen, I didn't, wasn't expecting nails on. Um, that's okay. Uh, there is a fee for the removal. Um, we're going to be able to go ahead and get it done. Mm -hmm. If not, again, don't stress yourself out. Sit there and literally tell them, I'm sorry, I did not know you had nails. We can, one, work around what you have and get you through until two weeks, or we're going to have to reschedule where you can come in and I can remove. Yeah. But I, you know, I think sometimes we're so afraid to communicate with people um, and that they're going to get upset, but they're going to get really upset if they don't get what they want. Yeah. And your client after them is going to be really upset because you're running late. Um, so it's just better for open. I mean, really, honestly, it was their, their fault for not communicating. There's always the option of texting, which mm -hmm. is basically like a consultation at this point. Yep. Uh, I, when I was in salon, I would usually say, you know, are you looking to get a full set or, you know, what are you looking for? And then I would also include that I didn't work over other people's work mm, because I couldn't guarantee the product, you know, I, like I didn't know if they'd gone to a salon that maybe used MMA and my product's not going to stick to that or if there's like lifting underneath that's not my problem right but it's from the tech before or the product before so i would always point out that i did not work over other people's work so if they needed to do a removal we could schedule for that um but i needed them to start out bare and right again open communication right yeah and that was kind of just a part of the standard like 
when I'm getting a new appointment in. So I pointed it out. It wasn't like they even had the opportunity to not know, you know? Right. I like that. Um, I think that the communication is key and that it's really hard, especially if they walk in with other people's products. There's some product out there that is extremely difficult to take off. Yeah. As we know. Um, yeah. And that, even doing what I did, it, that's going to take a while because it just, it's hard to file. Mm -hmm. Just so you guys know, I'm filing on that little bit of acrylic that's left on her. So we're just filing that. Um, so you, you, yeah, I mean, it, it, being able to text anymore is, <laughs> it's huge, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's hard for you not to know what you're facing because you can literally say, shoot me a, a pic of your, your nails real quick mm -hmm. before you come in. Oops. Thank you. What else we got? Mm, what grit file are you using? My favorite, 150. Always. Always, always. Oh my gosh, it's so weird to see your nails like this. <laughs> it's so strange. Hubby's not gonna like it. <laughs> I've never seen a man so imp opinionated about the length of someone's nails as Hubby. Oh, no. And it's pretty fitting, being so he's got a nail company. So. <laughs> it's I still guess it makes sense. It makes sense. <laughs> I always laugh. I'm like between him wanting, liking my nails long and my husband liking my hair long, uh, my hair long and Habib liking my nails long. It's like, uh, I have no choice. No. Nope. <laughs> One day I'm going to show up with short hair and short nails. See what happens. <laughs> okay. Cool. Let's fix this one. So now you're basically just prepping. I'm just shaping. For like a regular gel polish. Yep. Get your nails kind of because you have taken that length down so they're a little crooked making sure everything's nice and smooth because we are going over that little bit of acrylic that you have down mm -hmm. and the way we've filed it and thinned it out i mean you're not going to have any lifting issues with this it's just basically giving us a nice little surface or a tougher surface to be working over in that way we don't worry about you so for my maintenance going forward, would there be any issues with chipping or there shouldn't be durability? No, nope. it should. The only thing I can say is if you're a client, right? Again, clients sometimes think, oh, well, my nails grew out. They have extremely thin nails and they think, okay, I can just start doing this and I might not run into problems. You might be one of those clients that really need a little thicker surf base. Yeah. So it might be something where, you know, you wait and you see and you're like, oh, mm, that didn't really work out yeah. as it grows out completely. Um, we need to put like maybe a hard gel in the back instead of the soft gel base, something yeah. like that. So you can kind of work with them on it. Right. Um, so it's just really kind of, the, the client's nails are what really dictate what you have to do. Yeah, I used to just kind of explain to my clients at this point, like, you know, these are still your nails. They're not, they, they don't have the durability yeah. like they used to. And I, 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 not God, I did not fix yeah. your issues. I gave you strength over the top. Now that that strength isn't there, right? Yeah. Yeah, they gotta, they gotta, they gotta try it out for themselves. I am, I'm definitely one of those people that go back and forth between short and long, um, especially in the summer. I don't know why long nails are like a winter thing. <laughs> okay, let's prep this. Just have a little bit of lifting right there. And I think. We are good. We can shape you a little bit once we get the product on too. Okay, let's move that, dust yourself off. Let's grab our swipe, cleanse these nail beds, see what we're dealing with. I think what I'm gonna use on you is pink one or two, sheer pink one or two. Has a little bit more glitter left in it. Let's get rid of that. Yeah. 
go ahead and protein bond. Now I like to protein bond the whole surface of the nail because I electrify even the gel polish off, so I'm not too worried about it. Let's get this on over the whole surface. All the way through, and that way we're nice. I'm not going to have any chipping from that little bit of acrylic that's down. All the way. Let's go ahead and do you twice for good measure. That way we don't have to worry about any lifting. And I am going to base you, even though there is a little bit of acrylic, because I think that added little strength will help. I'll get in there. So what else do we have today? I think we're doing a couple different videos. This was a suggestion from the Facebook community, but we also had like a, what dimensional nails were requested. Yeah. A couple different things. We love the requests, so keep them coming. Yeah. We get try to get to all of them. Okay, we're gonna base. Get that base. We have that little even surface. We didn't get everything evened out with our file. This is going to help smooth everything out. How long does manicure base need to cure? I cure it for 30 seconds is what I cure it for. It doesn't really need any longer than that. I always like to do a final cure on everything for one minute when I get the top coat on. Okay. All the way down. And I'm just kind of float, lightly floating, kind of giving us a nice smooth surface to work on. Sorry, Gio. Getting the shoulder tap. <laughs> hey, it's the first one of the day. I'm pretty impressed with myself. Yeah, that's not bad. We had a question about um, manicure in general. She said that she'd been seeing that people were not capping. Mm. And that was something she was always taught. Is that necessary? And if not, why? I don't personally cap um, because it's not necessary with our product. I will say with our product. I've heard on other product that if you don't cap, you can get separation from the tip. Mm -hmm. um, that's just not an issue for us. So... In fact, I like to kind of go back and lightly file, especially if I'm doing a dark color mm -hmm. with manicure, because you start seeing all those imperfections, right? So um, if you do that, you can just go back and file. I constantly file on my own nails when wearing manicure, mm -hmm. and I never get separation. Another good question from the community was uh, when she applies her gel polish over her enhancements, she felt like she loses some of the sharpness of the, uh, her shaping. Mm. Um, do you know why and what can you do to resolve that? Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and put two layers on. I think it'll look prettier. Um, so the question is sometimes when you're putting a gel polish on, especially over artificial, you like have this really nice tight looking nail and you start putting gel polish on and it starts to kind of look thick and it loses its shape, right? Is that the question? Correct. So thin layers are definitely key and using a thinner gel polish. Also, what I recommend, like if you're putting over um, gel polish over an enhancement and you're like, you know what, I know for a fact I'm gonna be using several coats and I'm gonna do a glitter press, I start thinking about how I'm gonna thin down that nail. Like I don't need to make it as thick the artificial itself because I'm putting added strength over the top. So that's also a way is not getting a perfectly thick nail prior to putting the gel polish. Think about how much you're going to layer on top and kind of back off your artificial from there. If that made sense at all. Did that make sense? I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you do. <laughs> okay. Back here. You can also always kind of clean up your free edge because manicure doesn't chip. Like if you feel like you're losing some of your sharp square or something like mm -hmm. that, you can always go run a file over it after you've top coated. Side walls, everything. Yeah. yeah. I think, and, it, and here's, if you get a nail that looks thick, file it a little bit and then put one more thin layer on. If you're like, mm, that's just not acceptable. Yeah. Get Reshape it and put one thin layer on just to 
touch up what you hit. Okay, we're gonna go put that in a minute now. Um, and that'll help too, if, if you accidentally get it too thick. It happens. But yeah, I like to go through and just reshape a little bit after the gel polish. And that's why I love ours so much is you can, you have a chance to do that. Oh, is this going to feel weird? <laughs> Having little shorties? I'm sure it won't last long. <laughs> I'm not too worried about it. Okay, let's get our gel polish. So I'm doing that final one minute cure on that one. Let's get our oil out. Screw lids back on so I don't dump it everywhere. And that way we're always multitasking. Get this part out. And let's get that sticky layer off. Yeah, I think we're gonna give the milk bath nails a try, even though I've been refusing pretty hardcore. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a huge fan of it. But, uh, That's what the client wants. It, it's popular, and it's not like one of those, you know, it's not like bubble nails. <laughs> it's not like, oh God, I can't put my name on that. Um, and I think when you find a design that you're not a fan of like that, if you can try to tweak it where you like design, that, that's always helpful. Nourish that skin. Reshape a little bit. Pretty good. It's sheer pink, so you're really not <laughs> going to see much. <laughs> and we are done, ma'am. All right. full acrylic removal into a beautiful set of gel polish. What are the key things, Tracy, that um, nail pros need to understand in removal? Like to do it fast, to get their clients uh, a nice set of gel polish and out the door. Like what are some of the key tips? I, I think the electric file is huge. And, and just knowing that snap off technique, cause I, I didn't know that for a long time. And so uh -huh. you're like soaking and trying to scrape and then it, it, it can take forever. I used to schedule an hour just for removal. Wow. Yeah. I really think the e-file is the key to this. Obviously knowing the techniques is, is absolutely necessary in order to get it in this time frame, correct? Yes. Get the e-file, get your time down, get your salon game to the next level. Great set of nails. Thank you. See you next week on Real Time.